Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am the Furniture Flipping Teacher. I recently resigned from my full-time job as a kindergarten teacher and now I am here to show you guys how I take old and outdated furniture and give it a new purpose and a new life or maybe inspire you a creative way to transform some furniture in your own home. Today, it's gonna be me filming this flip and I am so excited because I am flipping my childhood dining table. So long story short is a few years ago, well, several years ago, my brother and sister-in-law moved into their house. My parents got a new table, so they gave this table and chairs to them. Then they got a new set and then had this one sitting in their garage waiting for me to take and you know, I took it because when I brought them their changing table, they wanted it out of the garage. I took it and instead of keeping it for myself, I am gonna do what I do best. I am going to refinish it and sell it for a profit. So in essence, this table and chairs was free. I have had this in my family for as long as I can remember because, you know, like I said, it's my childhood dining set. I'm so excited to give this table and chairs a new life because it is very well loved as you can tell by the videos and the photos. It has been very well loved over the years. It is truly distressed in a natural way and I can't wait to show you guys what I have in mind for this table and chairs. My first step up is going to be to clean everything off because this table and chairs has been sitting in the garage for several years now. So it is just full of gunk and plus we eat on tables. So just imagine what is on top of this table, on the chairs and so on. So let's get started by cleaning. So like I said, it's just going to be me here filming today, so please bear with me. I know I'm not going to have as many cool slow-mo shots for you guys, but I hope you enjoy the flip anyway. Neiman is doing some other administrative work and, you know, it's really, really, really hard for him to keep me away from flipping furniture. This is just truly what I love to do. So today we're going to be cleaning with some super clean. I'm going to just spray down everything and then wipe off all of the dirt, dust, and grime. are pretty flaky and so I'm gonna have to go ahead and give it a nice scuff sanding to get all those flakes off as much as I can because I don't want that to start us off on the wrong foot when it comes to applying the paint because if if it's flaking here, you know, it's not gonna, just putting a layer of paint over, it's not gonna stop it from flaking. So I'm gonna make sure that I get all those flakes off um, before we do any primer or any paint. I know I said I was never gonna do another chair uh, and table set again, but you know, when the right thing comes along, you just gotta take it. So it looks like one of the little spindles is broken, so we'll definitely need some wood glue there. Shouldn't be too hard of a fix. Just gotta glue it in there. Did our first layer of cleaning, and now we're gonna rinse everything off and we will get ready for some sanding. Uh, 
All right, here we are with my surf prep sander and I've got my foam abrasive attachments as well for getting really well around those spindles. And right now I'm gonna start with 100 grit on the top of the table. I'm not gonna go all the way down, but I am gonna smooth out the roughness that I feel. And then we'll move on to the chairs and that's where I'll be using the foam padding, which will it's squishy, so it will allow me to get around those spindles. This alone makes the surf prep so worth it because you're not risking getting those curved areas flattened out by sanding it down. So let's get started with the top first. <laughs> finished sanding everything down and uh, let's see sanding alone took me only an hour so I say only but really that's not too bad considering all the spindles and things like that and again I didn't go all the way down to the bare wood I just kind of made sure that everything was smoothed out and then also made sure that I got all those flaky pieces that were coming off the wood. So now the next thing we've got to do is go ahead and wipe down all of this sanding dust that is all over everything and then we'll move on to the primer. So the reason we're gonna go ahead and wipe down all of the dust off of the chairs and the table from that sanding is mostly so that we can make sure that the paint is going to stick to that surface instead of the dust that's got kicked up from the sanding. And we just, we don't want any of that dust to get in our paint. So I'm just using a little bit of a damp microfiber cloth to go ahead and pick up all that extra dust that I can before I add any primer onto my surface. Everything is wiped down. So we're gonna prime and we're gonna be using the shellac bin zinser primer for this in the spray can because I think that that's just gonna be the easiest way to get along all of these spindles. And then in the long run, it's gonna save us from any bleed through because as you can see, there's some spots, especially where I was sanding that have those breakthrough spots, meaning that the, the finish is off. And so I don't wanna risk any of that coming through the paint because it's going to be somewhat of a lighter color paint that we're going to be using so that is our next step let's prime okay primer i've got my kills primer and this is the kills interior primer but it blocks heavy stains and odors so this is going to be the oil based and it's also white i've got my handy dandy little spray can holder that I am also going to be using and this is just going to essentially make it easier for me so I don't have to continue with my finger the whole time but instead I can go ahead and use this just clip it on the top and then when you pull the trigger it sprays and this is also able to help you get a more even consistent spray as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my mask on and then we're gonna go ahead and give some chairs and the table a little primer. I think I'm gonna go ahead and flip the chair first, do the bottom and then we'll move on to the top.
ran out of spray primer, but luckily all I've got left is the tabletop. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that with a roller and then we will go ahead and sand everything smooth. All right, so this primer is all dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my Surf Prep again. It's just a very fine sandpaper that I'm just gonna smooth out the primer with. And I did a really quick sanding block over the flatter surfaces of the chairs, but really that spray primer, as long as you're not getting pools of the primer in one spot it sprays on really nice and evenly and it even gives a nice smooth finish since i rolled this on on the tabletop i'm gonna go ahead and quickly just do a quick sand because you know otherwise you get that orange peely feel when you're rolling and just like that we are ready to paint and i haven't yet told you guys what color i'm gonna paint this table and chairs i'm actually going for a solid look other than a few little additions i'm going to add on i actually stopped by walmart and i picked up the waverly brand chalk paint so i am going to be mixing the elephant color with the white color and i'm going to make a lighter gray it's not going to be too light but it's not going to be too dark and I'm excited because I finally get to try a sprayer on a table and chairs set and I'm crossing my fingers that it's not gonna take very long. Let's get started. We're gonna mix some paint and then we're gonna spray. We are going to go ahead and mix some paint here. I've got the Waverly White and I've got the Waverly Elephant. So I'm gonna be mixing it inside of my little jar here along with possibly some water. We're gonna start out with some elephant and we're just, you know, I am, I just don't measure <laughs> my paint. I suggest that you do measure it if you're trying to mix and you might need to make more. I kinda just go about and hope for the best. We're gonna go, luckily this actually does have a measuring cup on it, so that's awesome. I'm gonna go with 10 ounces of the gray. These come in 16 ounce jars as well as smaller and smaller. The 16 ounce jar is only $11, so that's a plus. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open the white as well. We're just gonna be doing half and half. So we're at 20 ounces total and I am confident that that's not too much here for our paint because I, you know, there's a lot of chair to cover. There's a big table to cover and I'm confident that this will be enough to do both coats and even a third if we need it. So we're kind of getting that lighter gray color that I was going for. And you know, the consistency of this, just the paint alone is okay. I think I will add a little bit of water here just to kind of thin it out a little more to easier go through the sprayer. I am using my Wagner Flexio 4000. So I will link that below in the description if you are interested in a sprayer. They have several different types of sprayers as well. Don't feel obligated to only get the one that I've got. Wagner has some awesome sprayers. So we've really got to mix that in and this is fine to add a little bit of water to this because it is a water-based paint. So once we get it all stirred around and mixed in correctly, we will be golden. It's really important that you get it all mixed up in your sprayer. That way you don't have just random clots of like darker gray or white coming through your sprayer. You need to get it all one consistent color. I've used the Waverly chalk paint one other time and I actually ended up mixing that with the Annie Sloan chalk paint. So technically this would be my first considered time using Waverly and I'm just interested to see how it kind of goes through the sprayer and also just the finish of it in general. We're gonna go ahead and close these back up and then 
we're gonna go ahead and spray. I've got my table turned upside down first. That way I can be sure to get all of those nooks and crannies on the legs and on the underside of the table. And then we'll move on to the top side of the table once that kind of dries. But right now let's hook her up and spray. Don't forget, we've got to do that safety aspect. Go ahead and get my spray mask on. Now we're ready. Alrighty, the legs have the first coat on them, so we're gonna let that dry until we come back and do coat number two. Ready for some chairs. All right, first coat on everything is done. I've even got two coats on some things, but ultimately our job now is to just wait until everything's completely dry and then I'll go back and do some touch-ups because this honestly had really great coverage. So I'm only gonna need to do second coat touch-ups where I still see that white primer popping through the gray. All in all, that first coat plus a little bit more took me just under an hour to spray everything. So as you can see and tell, these spindles are getting painted way faster with a sprayer than they would with a brush. I probably would still be painting for a whole nother hour if I was using a brush. So. I'm so glad that I invested in that sprayer. If you guys are interested in investing in that sprayer, I highly recommend it. It doesn't even have to be a Wagner. It can be any sprayer, but it's just going to speed up your process tenfold. I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding down on the surface here to flatten everything out, and then we'll do a second coat, touch up coat on some of the areas. Looks like I am going to need some more paint here. So we'll just go ahead and pour the rest in. So what I did actually to get some water is I went ahead and put some water inside of both of these and I'm gonna shake them up, get as much of that color and paint out that I can. gonna dump it into here. So that's gonna thin things out as well as get as much paint out of the container as I can. And now we stir. Okay, time to hook her back up. We are ready for coat number two. up on the second coat slash touch up coat really all I used was two cans of the Waverly chalk paint so two 16 ounce cans so that's a 32 ounce can there that I used and so that just cost me about $24 $22 and plus tax so that's a pretty good investment for an entire table set even with a leaf and four chairs i'm really pleased with the results of the waverly chalk paint it really self levels itself out with the sprayer at least now our job is just to go ahead and wait for everything to dry and then i'll be sealing it also with a waverly clear wax it's more of like a liquidy wax so i'm anxious to try it out and see what type of results that we get. It should really 
brighten up this gray. We're back out here this morning with some stenciling that I'm actually gonna be doing. I know I said my next step was to do the wax, but I decided that I wanted to do a little bit of contrasting and dimension to this table. So I picked up a stencil at Michael's because I didn't, I have a lot of stencils, I haven't used them, but I didn't have this specific style of stencil that I was kind of looking for. So found one at Michael's and I'm excited because this is gonna be my first time actually attempting a stencil. And we're gonna be using the Waverly White that I've got a little bit left over here. And then I also picked up some stencil sponges and those are just going to help you not get so much paint on and things like that. So my first step is to go ahead and sand down with a sanding sponge the top of this table because it's just a little bit rough from the sprayer. Again, the goal is not to take any of the paint off during that. I That was my last coat of paint, but I just wanted to smooth everything out and it's a much smoother surface now. It kind of looks a little funky because it's got kind of that dust and marks all over, but when you do that clear wax or the top coat, that's gonna continue to bring it back to life and normalize that color again. We're gonna go ahead and open the stencil here. When I was picking out my stencil, I just kind of wanted one of those mandala mandala however you say it because I just think that this is the most simple yet unique and kind of will give it that like boho feel just a tad bit though nothing too crazy so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna be doing it in the middle because I have a leaf and if I did it with the leaf in the middle, then once someone put the leaf in there, it would separate it and it would just look kind of funny in my opinion. So I'm gonna avoid going across the crack in any way, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna focus kind of on the edges of the table and then maybe put one here in the middle. I'm not sure yet. I think at this point less is more, especially since this is my first time. So I've got my paint, like I said, and it's just a tad bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into the lid, just a little bit, because you honestly don't need a lot of paint when you're doing stenciling. The actually less is more again with that. I'm gonna use the medium sponge here, and this is going to help me get into the spots of the stencil. So I'm just going to take a tad bit of paint, and you know what, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and tape this down. You can just use painter's tape. That way it won't peel any of your tape off. I think we're gonna go right here on the edge. Personally, I don't really care for this around the outside, so I'm just gonna stick with this other part. Stenciling is a little bit of a longer process just because, again, you don't wanna wipe anything because that could get under the stencil. You just kind of want to do dabs. And I personally don't want my stencil to be perfect. I want it to be kind of edgy and not filled in all the way, if that makes sense. That's just kind of the look that I'm personally gonna go for here. Depends on what look you wanna go for. If you wanna fill all of your spots, then that's just up to you and up for the design that you are trying to go for. This is me stepping out of my comfort zone, you guys. I do not usually do this. <laughs> you know that. I'm gonna try to get more into the stencils, the transfers and things like that. But also remember that my end game is to have my pieces sell. So sometimes going a little bit crazier like that isn't the way to go if you're trying to make a quick profit. That's just the reality. But once you get into more of those custom orders, you might offer a transfer or something along those lines if you are into that. Or if you just, that's your style and that's what people are enjoying from you, then by all means, maybe they enjoy that. That might be a better profit in the end. You might just have to wait a little bit longer for that profit. We're getting close here. 
to finishing with this one. Carefully. Okay. Hmm. It's not horrible. Definitely interesting. Hmm. Okay. I think maybe it moved a bit too much. <laughs> But I think I still like it because honestly, I was planning on, like I said, I didn't want it exactly perfect. I was planning on doing a little bit of distressing with it. So I think that this is going to work out. I'm going to go ahead and clean my stencil off and we're going to move on to the next one. I think the next spot is going to be right around here. I think we'll go for a full on stencil here this time worst comes to worst if i don't like it or if this doesn't sell right away i could always paint over the stencil that i created you know sometimes you may try something a little bit risky out of the box nobody likes it and you have to try again you can just paint over your stencil that would be an option as well yeah i'm definitely not a pro at this <laughs> Definitely not a pro. That's okay. I am having fun. All right, this one is ready. Ooh, that's the best one yet. Gonna wipe this off again. Table stencils are done. Now we're gonna move on to the chairs. And with the chairs, I'm thinking of doing a few on the backs of the chairs and then maybe even a few on the actual seat as well. Again, nothing huge or whole stencils like this, but just maybe sections of it. Alrighty, all of the stenciling is done on the tabletop and the chairs. So my next step is just gonna be to distress a little bit. So when I'm distressing the table, I don't wanna go through too much on the top, but I am going to just sand down the white a little bit. I just want a little bit more of a worn out look for these. And then also I'm gonna be distressing around the edges. Now we're gonna go ahead and distress down under. Next step, we're going to go ahead and do the chairs in the same way. So I'm just gonna take my hand sander here and just distress a little bit around the edges. Again, I don't want anything crazy. I just wanna work on giving it a nice worn look. So when I distressed things, I just kind of make sure to go as natural as possible. I don't want to force any lines. And luckily these chairs were a bit distressed when I first started refinishing them. So I can kind of gauge where an appropriate line or distressing may occur. We're done with distressing. We're finally ready to put on the clear wax. And I actually got the Waverly clear wax and it's wax, but it's liquid. So I'm kind of anxious to see. I also grabbed one of their Waverly wax brushes as well. Um, we'll see, this one's pretty tiny as you can see, but I'm gonna see if I like using this brush or if I would rather use a little bit of a bigger brush. Okay, so I have wiped all of my dust back from the table, from all that sanding. And so now, like I said, I'm going to be using Waverly's Clear Wax. And basically all I'm gonna be doing is taking this brush and applying it basically like a top coat, except this is just more 
like a waxy finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. Okay, so I've got about half of it done. I'm gonna take a microfiber lint-free cloth and just kind of wipe it back. It says to wipe back the excess. And then once it's completely dry, I can go ahead and go buff it all out to make it a nice smooth look as well. You can also apply this with a lint-free cloth if you don't have a wax brush or if you prefer that method. So you can definitely tell the difference between waxed and not waxed. And that just really gives it a nice finished look, especially when this dries, it will just be so much more bright and shiny, but it's not a shine, more of just a finished look. All right, we're gonna move on down here to the chair legs. So we're going under. We are all finished up with the waxing. I really like that wax. Like I said, it was kind of a top coat slash wax because it was liquid, but yet the feel of it was more like a wax and I wiped it back. And honestly, just touching it and it's not even completely dry yet, but it just feels so smooth to the touch. And I think it really did an awesome job covering everything and it's, once it's dry in that full 24 hours, it's going to be the utmost protection that I could ask for on this table and chair set. I personally think this set turned out really cute. Um, Neiman doesn't like it at all. I think it's partly because of the stencils. Like I said, usually I don't do the stencils. He's not sure about the project in entirety. So when I asked him how much I should sell it for, he said free. So that was kind of rude, but I think I am gonna go more toward the $200, $250 range. Um, it is all solid wood. The chairs are in really nice shape. They've all got the bottom furniture movers on there that protect your floor. So I don't know, it has a leaf. I think that 200 to 250 is a great price. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. What do you think I should sell it for? What would it sell for in your area perhaps? And then also let me know down below what you guys think about the whole stencil thing. Um, I'm really trying to branch out a little bit and get a little bit more creative with some things instead of just making everything so plain. Like I said, I wanna do some transfers and some more stenciling. So this was my my first little go at it and I had a lot of fun and sometimes that's all that matters is that we have fun when we are refinishing something. It's time to go ahead and get this staged over on our staging wall so that we can take some photos and post it over on Facebook Marketplace. Well, the set has not sold yet to date. It is still listed at $225. I had one person who really liked it, but it was just a bit too big, which is weird because it's really small, but. Oh, anyway, we were actually thinking that it would be kind of fun to share with you guys me at that kitchen table when I was younger. So we got out my baby book. Yes, my baby book. And we found one photo of me kind of not at the table, but standing near the table playing with some dolls. So we thought that would be fun to share with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video a lot. This was a really fun flip to get to see my old kitchen table and chairs from my childhood get revamped into something new, all using Walmart's chalk paint. Don't forget to let me know down below what your take on the stenciling process was and if you 
you are going to try that soon for your next flip. And you guys, we have some awesome, awesome news. Usually at the first of the month, we share a recap of the previous month, but this Thursday, July 1st, we are going to be going live on our channel. So it's gonna still encompass some of the numbers from June, but we've got some other fun things. So get your questions ready. It is gonna be a Q&A toward the end of the live. We hope you guys can all be there. It is at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Thursday, July 1st. So we hope you all can join us for that. Get your clocks out, get your time converters out, figure out what time 7 p.m. Central Standard Time is in your area, and then check in tomorrow on Tuesday and we will have a live premiere so you guys can get notified when that live goes live on Thursday. So we'll see you then. Get subscribed down below and I'll see you on the flip side.